welcome back to our channel, Being Human. Or if you're here for the first time, welcome for the first time. Um, I'd like to thank Jeff for contributing. We had been looking forward to that for some time and um, we are not disappointed, that's for sure. <clears throat> I'd also like to go on and thank Jeff for throwing down the gauntlet. Yes, he has challenged me to expend a little more time and energy in my presentation and uh, not just my content. Uh, so hopefully today will be my first edited video uh, and hopefully you'll see things up here. If I didn't do it right, you're just gonna see me standing with my hands like this. Today's topic is validation. Uh, pardon me for the uh, stuffiness, I've been ill lately. <clears throat> and if you haven't noticed, one of the things that we do in general is to challenge what's often referred to as common knowledge, uh, which is neither common and often it's not knowledge. So um, today's video is no different. Uh, pay attention. Um, we'll take a critical look at the way that we've accepted things in this world and the way that people believe things are and ought to be. And maybe you could see something different. In fact, I suggest that if the way that you've been looking at it hasn't worked well for you, consider looking at it this way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's talk about validation. What is validation and why do we think it's so important? Validation is when you get some type of external support for your validity. Really? Is that how it works? What causes us to seek validation and desire it? In fact, in many of today's and historical therapy sessions, um, people are often encouraged to validate each other on a regular basis. In fact, they even say the word need. This person needs validation. Is that true? Do you truly need external validation? Is that making you feel good about yourself? Like, say, likes on Facebook? What happens when the likes run out? I suggest the more important question is this. Why do you feel like you need validation? What is it? Why aren't you already valid? <clears throat> Consider this. You'll often be recommended to disregard people's criticisms or um, complaints about you, insults, yes? Uh, but when somebody offers you a compliment, then you'll be encouraged to accept that. Why is that? Why are the criticisms and complaints invalid and the compliments and are valid? Why is that? More importantly, ask yourself this question. If somebody that you liked or knew or respected or even just a, a, a stranger came up to you and said, you know, you're an astoundingly cool person. I really enjoy your presence. You're just a great guy. And that makes you feel good. Ask yourself why, but not, not why did it make you feel good? Why didn't you already feel good? Why is that compliment something that brings you up? Why aren't you already up? In fact, if you think about it, most people who offer you these compliments and criticisms know very little about you. They don't know you at your depth. They're not connected to you as a human being. And yet we react to those compliments and criticisms as if they're important, they matter, they're the gospel. That's an important thing to contemplate. And I think if you're seeking true peace as a human being, you're gonna find the validity in you unrelated to what the outside world thinks. It's a good question though, how did we end up here? When was the first time you noticed that you sought validation? I can think of being in grade school where getting a gold star, if you got a gold star, uh, we did everything to get a gold star. Right? And the thing was not everybody got gold stars and on the days that you didn't, you felt worse. So this thing that made you feel better also made you feel worse. That doesn't seem like a useful tool to me. I think you can be more than that. I think we all can. But think about how many ways our society does this, validates or invalidates you. We do it based on money. We do it based on education. We give our kids trophies and medals. We get degrees in, I got a master's degree. Oh, we, we take it a step further. What, what was your GPA? Because surely if your GPA was high enough, you're a far more valid person than somebody with a lower GPA, right? Is that how that works? If I have a doctorate degree, is it better than your master's? Am I, am I more valid than you? 
If I have $100 million, am I more valid than you? Think about what a contorted way of looking at ourselves that is. If you go back to my um, trail of videos, you'll find that one of them was about self-worth. And I argue that most of us grow up to some degree with a, some sense of low self-worth. I believe that our desire to be validated is driven by that. And that when somebody says something positive about you or you get that degree or that raise or that new car or that attractive partner or those likes on Facebook or whatever it is that in the moment makes you feel better, it for a moment relieves that pain of the belief that you have that you're not more than you are. In fact, success and failure are one of those things, right? We're constantly striving success and we fear failure. Do you fear failure? Are you afraid to fail? I suspect you're not afraid to fail. I suspect you're afraid of what you think failure says about you as a human. And that how you're afraid everybody will look at you. Think about how contorted that is. Imagine I go to work and I walk into the coffee break room and somebody says, Dr. Maswick, you're such a nice guy and I feel good. And then I go into another room and somebody says, you know, Dr. Maswick, you're a jerk and I feel bad. And I go into another room and somebody says, Dr. Maswick, I really like you. And then I feel good. And then I stop at Dunkin' Donuts and the cashier is mean to me and calls me a jerk and I feel bad. This makes my whole emotional existence dependent on what other people say about me. People who don't truly know me and people who aren't connected to me. And yet, I allow it to rule the quality of my day and my life. Can you see how this might be a problem? <laughs> Sometimes I talk about it from this point of view, when people talk about being offended. What does it mean to be offended? Now, I'm sure all of you have some idea of a, of a definition in your mind, but here's what I think it means. If I'm offended, it means I'm holding you responsible for my inability to control my emotional response. Think about that for a minute. Because if I'm truly at peace with who I am as a human being, if I embrace my value and accept it, then you couldn't possibly offend me. I don't care who you are. It is out of the realm of possibility for you to offend me. You can't say anything or do anything that offends me because I'm already okay. So this idea of being offensive, I mean, obviously and hopefully you're not going to try to purposely hurt other people, but in general, when somebody says something that might be accepted as offensive, to me, I see a person who's hurting and who has a misunderstanding and doesn't know me. And when I put it in that context, I couldn't possibly be offended. Can you see how this is working? This is very difficult. You are uh, immersed in a society um, that consistently and continuously ranks you. You are ranked on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Reddit and TikTok based on the number of people who liked your stuff or who spoke poorly about you. You are ranked by your income, your intellect, your education, uh, the kind of car you have, the attractiveness of your partner, your physical appearance, your weight, your height. I mean, think about all of the ways that we judge each other. And when you're engrossed in a society that constantly judges, finding what I'm trying to offer you becomes very difficult. You're going to have to disregard society's judgments of you and your judgments of you and your judgments of others. And that is a whole nother talk. Um, I, I have a fairly long discussion that I, I do about judgments and values to help people um, because I believe that any true path of spirituality is going to require that you relieve yourself of all judgments, including judgment of self. Um, and in fact, those will happen at the same time. So next time you receive a compliment and it makes you feel good, ask yourself for a moment, why didn't I already feel good? What does this person know about me? You can find a thread of this running through the four agreements. Um, don't take it personally is one of the agreements. And, uh, most people interpret that to mean don't take it personally when somebody is mean. But there are two sides to that coin. You ought not take it personally when somebody says something nice to you as well. Now it's okay to uh, accept a compliment. Of course it's okay to do what you're doing. I'm, there's no judgment here. However, um, when you find inner peace, it doesn't affect your core. 
Compliments don't affect your core and insults don't affect your core. And, and that's one of the difference. And I think um, it was worded best in a, in a poem, but I'm gonna paraphrase um, what he said was success and failure, but I would say success and failure, compliments and criticisms are the same imposter in a different uniform. I want you to think deeply about that. And I want to thank you for uh, joining me today. And I hope that you got something out of this. Uh, if you find value in it, you're going to have to practice it. You're going to have to catch yourself on a regular basis. Once you start doing it, you'll notice how much of your well-being is based on other people's perceptions of you or your need for validation. Okay? And when you can release that, uh, you will find a deeper um, and more meaningful peace in your existence. Um, so again, thank you very much. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, we want as many people to um, enjoy this and grow from it as possible. And the more um, that you show, the more that you know. So um, again, I look forward to seeing you next time. And Jeff, I hope you're impressed. Thank you.